Hiya, and welcome back to Promises to Keep. The game that teaches us that... Theo is... the comfort character for this game. It's not Rofi. It's not Hunter. It's not Artemis. It's not what's-his-name. It's Theo. Let me push my laptop back. Anyways, let's just hop right in. You done with your plate, the Leo? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I think so. Do you want to help with the dishes? Nope, not at all. I like doing them. Gives me time to think. You are free to entertain yourself however you wish. I'm giving you the rest of the night off. Theo chuckles at his own joke as he starts loading plates into the dishwasher. I stand up slowly, feeling warm and pleasantly full. Outside, the wind howls and beats at the windows. The snow still hasn't stopped. I wasn't quite ready for bed, but it seemed like Rofi and Hunter were both calling it a night. They left Artemis and Ollie? I wonder what each of them is up to. Who should we spend time with? Emo bird or dinosaur? I'm trying to crack my back. Who do you like more? No! Decisions! Emo bird or dinosaur? Oh, hiya. Welcome. Yeah, let's go with the dinosaur. I decide I'm due to spend some time with Ollie, and as I enter the living room, I run into him. He's standing in the middle of the room, lost in his phone. Not quite blocking the path, but not out of the way either. Must be really absorbed in something. Hey. I try my best not to startle him, but fail anyway. No! I'm sorry, I'm totally in your way. Here, let me move. No, you're good. I wanted to talk to you, actually. What are you up to? Um, nothing really. Just scrolling. I know what you mean, yeah. Hey, do you have any plans for tonight? Ollie fiddles with his phone, spinning it between his claws so fast I'm afraid he'll drop it. Well, I, uh, no. That's sort of what I was thinking about. Oh, did you want did you want to show me your desktop setup like we were talking about earlier? The dino flushes a little, his eyes wandering the room. The twirling phone starts to spin faster. Well, yes, I do, but there were a lot of things to do, and I got a little sidetracked. Oh, okay, that's fine. We'll do that tomorrow, whenever. No pressure. Ollie makes eye contact. Then, he stops spinning his phone and, like clockwork, begins to shuffle his feet. I still have my laptop, though. We could watch something. I, uh, oh, one of my favorite YouTube channels always updates today, and I, and I was going to watch the new episode. So if you're interested in that, then... The words spill out of his mouth in a jumble, almost as if he's afraid he won't get them out in time. Sure, that sounds fun. I swear to God, if he watches Mr. Beast. My phone buzzes in my pocket, and a thought occurs to me. Uh, as long as you don't mind if I answer some messages during... Now that news is spread about the storm, I should probably let people know that I'm okay. Unless all those notifications were just from Rofi and Hunter blowing up the group chat. No, that's totally fine. I always do other stuff while I'm watching, too. So it's just kind of on in the background a bit. Uh, but I promise it's funny. I really like the hosts. Lead the way, then. Oh, oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Oh, jeez. My microphone is picking up too much. Let me just turn that down, and there we go. He leads me up the stairs and down the left path to his room, hesitating for a moment at the door. Uh, sorry again about the mess. Ollie opens the door and heads in first, kicking aside discarded clothes on his way to the bed. I follow, getting a closer look at the room now that he's had more time to set it up. The guest bed is in significant disarray, with most of its expanse taken up by the largest laptop I have ever seen. I can see the famous desktop sitting under a nearby table with three expansive and no doubt expensive monitors crowding the surface. A thicket of different colored cables cover the remaining space, their connected ends gathered in a pile on the floor. That tracks. Ollie would have bad cable management. I'll finish setting up tomorrow and you can see it then, but uh, is it cool if we use my laptop for tonight? Yeah, of course, I don't mind. Okay, thanks. Ollie scoots the computer over long enough to sit down and opens it up. Uh, you should be able to see from here. He pats an empty space next to him with a claw, excitement plain in his demeanor. 
I plop myself down onto the comfortable bed and slide up to the headboard so I can see the screen. My eyes widen involuntarily at the sight. My computer desktop can get a little cluttered, but Ollie's looks like a 52 pickup game at the scene of a car crash. What? And I thought my desktop was bad. That is... Oh, I've actually been wanting to join that server. Is is it bad? Is it like a bad... Is it a bad server? Is it not fun? Is it even still around? Did it pull in extracurricular activities and... Uh cease existing people are so thirsty he doesn't even seem to notice it however his practiced claws pick needles out of the haystack and in seconds the video is open and the theme is playing Hey, uh, do you mind if I open some other windows, too? Normally, I have three monitors to work with, but... He gestures to the tech pile on the nearby desk. Fine with me. I watch with growing awe as he arranges two other browser windows with their own muted videos playing what looks like a turn-based RPG, which he leaves running in the background and finally fishes his phone out of his pocket to boot up some sort of card game. I mean, I have two mon... I mean, I'm working with technically three screens a windows laptop and external monitor hooked up to there and a separate laptop with stream stats i mean if he was on a laptop then it wouldn't be too bad which he kind of is But am I playing three games at the same time, though? Depends on the game. Suddenly, I feel very old and very slow. Is volume high enough for you? What? I realize I haven't been paying attention to the video at all. From its spot in the top right corner of the screen, it looks like someone is drawing something. Some kind of art show? Uh, yeah, y yes, it's fine. So, uh, what's the prompt? Didn't you hear the intro? My eyes drift back over to the RPG as it plays itself. Bright characters with shining weapons dashing across the screen to slay enemies um no actually sorry ollie laughs a high-pitched sparkling sound worlds different from his usual mu muted voice <laughs> he turns to me with a huge toothy smile that's okay i'll start it over I'm not sure how much that will help. There's so much going on that it's really hard for me to focus on anything, but I nod anyway. It felt nice to make Ollie laugh, I realized. Nice to see him start to open up like this, even if I have to work to keep up with him. I guess I could ask him to explain some of the stuff. He might enjoy talking about it. Do you mind telling me more about this YouTube channel? Sure! They're professional artists, and they take prompts from viewers to draw certain things, and the kind of prompts they take very wildly, too. Like, this week they're drawing characters based off different kind of flowers. Those are words. Last week, they did a more serious art challenge where they picked one color and tried to make paintings using only the shades of that color. I learned a ton about color theory and different kinds of values, and the final pieces were all really cool. It sounds hard. I've done a bit of drawing over the years, but I never got very good at it. Are you an artist? Oh, no, God, no, definitely not. I can't draw to save my life. I mean, I think it might be cool, but... He drops his gaze back down to his phone game. Nah, I just don't think I'd be any good at it, and it's probably too late to start now. <laughs> too late anyway i mostly like their banter i love listening to good friends shoot the shit you know totally my favorite podcasts are just buddies sitting at a table and talking he nods enthusiastically now engrossed in his phone game what you playing mm oh it's a deck builder roguelike i like it because it kind of strips the genre down to its basics so the games are comparatively quick and i love the art style too they hire a ton of really different and talented artists to design them so every card choice you make feels really impactful and important So Tokyo After School Summoners. Cool, how do you play? 
Well, first you pick your starting cards. You only get 12 and can't double up, so you really gotta think about your strategy ahead of time. Oh, it might be Mortal Kombat 10. Once you do that, then you venture into the first level of the dungeon, which is always the same layout. It starts to get randomized after the second. I am very quickly realizing how open and verbose Ollie can be when he talks about something he loves. Part of me wants to interrupt him with questions, but I don't want him to clam up again. I hate that I can relate to him. I hate that I am relating to him. It really is sweet how passionate he is. So you fight using a randomly drawn hand of six cards. Obviously, each card does different things, but only has a certain number of uses, and when those are up, then you lose it for the rest of the turn. But whenever you finish a fight, you get the you get a choice of three random booster packs, each with, each of which have three cards to put into your side deck. Now, the side deck is obviously very important because it's the only way you can keep your most powerful cards in your hands when you need them. Similar to the main deck, for each hand you are dealt. He stops mid-sentence, seemingly realizing how much and how quickly he's been talking. Sorry, you didn't you hear all that. If you're interested, you can just play the tutorial. I'll do a much better job. It'll do a much better job of explaining than I did. You're fine, Ollie. I think I actually caught most of that. Well, maybe half of it. Here, give me the title and I'll download it later, okay? Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Um, by the way, just wanted to make sure. You're okay with me calling you Ollie, right? Ollie's face creases with worry again. I mean, yeah... You know, like I said, it, it's different if it's you. He turns red. Because you're my agent. I mean, you're obviously not going to judge me. I just, I don't know. I just get, I get the feeling about you. But Theo, I don't know. He just seems so much older and more mature. It just makes me anxious. You know what? I, I got a twin with him. I already got the hairstyle. Got a fucking death hawk. I already got the hairstyle. Let me grab the hoodie and the glasses. I actually need to be wearing my glasses, but I don't. Alright, let me see if I can twin. This is the closest color hoodie I have. The lightest color hoodie. How the fuck do I twin with a reptile? Uh, with a hoodie. That's how. Girl saw some shit. He saw all the shit. Oh no. Theta with a mohawk. I actually do have one. It's not gonna be around for too much longer. Paint your skin green now. No! No, I'm not going to paint my skin green. Okay, let me, let me take my hair down. This is a terrible idea. This is a terrible fucking idea. No! No! Stay away from me with those fucking dentures. Girl has the finest chompers. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can do this. Sort of crazy up my hair. I don't have anything to work with. Hair-wise. So it's just going to be laying flat. Which kind of sucks, but it's the best that I can do. And lastly, the glasses. Stretch those tooths. No! And the glasses are on. Okay, I'm turning on the, uh, the webcam. If I can, if I can find it. There it is. This is, this is the closest I can get. Like, my hair is down. I, like, do the whole fucking thing, then there, there we go. That, that's the closest. That's the closest I can get. That is the closest that I can ever get. My hair isn't short enough to just go up. Where the fuck did I put my glasses? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. My hair ain't short enough. And it's too hot to be wearing a hoodie. It's too hot. I gotta pull my hair back again. Hair refuses to give up to gravity. See, that's the thing. I was in a book event called Salon Jewel Ever. Closed book. I really enjoy it. Got some goodies like a cortex about all the dragon of the kingdom of Sea Ruin. Those are words. Alright, let me get my hair back. 
Because I always have it in a bun anymore. Unless I'm sleeping. Yeah, those are words. I'm going to assume that's a good thing. And... <sighs> oh, he's fucked up. <laughs> it just makes me anxious. Like I said earlier, it's a childish nickname, so... Looking at his dejected face, I decided to push back gently. And like I said earlier, I think it's cute and not childish at all. His blush turns up to 11. You just saying that, and anyway, that's, well, that's kind of the issue. I, look, it's not really a big deal. Like I said, I don't mind if you call me that. Just, let's talk, let's just talk about something else, please. Sure, totally. I'll have to ask him about that again later. For now, it's time to change the subject. So, what's this game? I point at the RPG. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. It has a daily reward mechanic, so I just got it running on auto battle so I can get my dailies. The problem is that I like all the characters, so I want to keep them all high level, but I keep running out of XP items. Oh, it's one of those games. What are they called again? Gotcha. Oh! I met, I know someone, unfortunately, who plays, uh, I'm not saying that people who play gotcha games religiously are bad. I'm not saying that at all. However, she dials it up to 11. Gotta love spending money on JPEGs. Isn't that, isn't that NFTs? Gotcha. He flushes slightly and fiddles with the trackpad. I know they're like a scam, basically about to trick kids into microtransactions, etc., etc. But this one is really well designed and has like war and peace levels of lore. It's it's not Star. It's not Star. I I I can't get into Gotcha. I can't. I I I can't. And you don't need to pay real money to get everything. It just takes longer. And, I, you know, I actually like that because I can keep it going in the background if I'm bored. Hey, no shade. I play Neo Critters for the longest time, so I've got no room to judge. Ollie's disdain is so immediate and so earnest that I can't help but laugh. His blush deepens. Sorry, I, I try to control myself like Neo Critters. That just means we both have bad taste. I can live with that. He smiles, once again showing off his assortment of incisors. Me too. My phone buzzes, and I suddenly remember my unread messages. I should probably answer those now. I don't want people to start getting worried about me. I begin shifting through the questions and well wishes. Family, college friends, one or two old co-workers. A surprising number of people had reached out, and the news of the Stowe Storm must have made it to some major news station. I really had expected it to just be Rofi and Hunter. I mean, of course it was them to some extent. Our group chat was starting to look like, get, like a GIF warehouse, but... Huh. A warm feeling begins to spread through my core. Sometimes you forget how many people are out, out there care about you. Who are you talking to, uh, if you don't mind me asking? Just letting folks know that I'm alright, and that I found somewhere to stay. I was just thinking about how nice it is that they messaged me. Reminds me that I do have friends, even if they don't live here. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? He looks down and twiddles his thumbs for a moment. I, nev I have never in my life seen someone actually twiddle their thumbs. It suits him. I met almost all of my friends online, and they live all over the place, so... Except for Artemis, of course. I probably wouldn't be in this nice, warm room if not for him. What do you mean? Well, this is embarrassing, but... When Theo first came to my door, I didn't answer. I don't like opening doors to strangers. Whenever the doorbell rings unexpectedly, I just kinda... freeze up. But Artemis knew I was still in there, so we came back with Theo and knocked until I opened up. He was pretty mad, especially once he realized how cold it had gotten in my apartment. I don't do very well with cold weather. I mean... Whether, I mean, I manage I couldn't live here otherwise, but without power, I think I would have been in real trouble if he hadn't been there. 
It reminds me, how did you two meet? I can't help but be curious. They seem like such unlikely friends. Well, uh, we met in college, actually. We both went to the school in the area. I think it was j my junior or senior year. My roommate was out, so I had the dorm room to myself for the night. Around 3 in the morning, I heard someone banging on the door and shouting, so I went to go check it out, but I didn't see anyone in the peephole. Turns out Artemis was sitting up against the door, so when I opened it, he just kind of fell into the room. Ollie shakes his head, smiling softly. His voice takes on a new tone. Smoother, less nervous. He sounds like a completely different person. He was so fucking smashed. He didn't even realize he was on the wrong floor. I explained it to him and everything, but he wasn't really in any state to leave. So I sat him up in a chair and brought him some water. And we talked for hours. Well, I guess it was mostly him talking, but that was fine by me. I wanted to hear about him. He was surprisingly coherent. He told me about his music and tried to play me some, but he couldn't get his phone to work. He kept dropping it in his lap. We talked until the sun came up, and by then he was feeling okay enough to walk, so we went to go get coffee. It was honestly a really magical experience, a magical night. Maybe more for me than him. When I talked to him about it later, he said he spent the rest of that day in bed with a nuclear hangover. He even draped a black blanket over the window to keep the night out, light out. Ollie falls silent then, lost in warm memories. I keep quiet too, not wanting to interrupt him. After a few moments, I speak up. That's a really nice story. It's kind of hard to believe, though, based on how he looks. I mean, somehow I can't imagine him being that much of a party dude. Despite my best effort, my voice breaks the spell. I probably shouldn't have told you all that. He doesn't really like it when I bring out that story. I think he's still embarrassed about it. Sorry, but can you just, like, forget I told you? Um, and if, uh, if that's okay, I mean. Ollie folds back into his usual self as he speaks, his voice deflating along with him. I just found you so easy to talk to that it just kind of slipped out. Me? Easy to talk to? I mean, I guess I didn't interrupt him, but that's just common courtesy. Hey, it's okay, I understand. We never had this conversation. Thanks. Tiredness suddenly washed over me. It's been a very eventful day, after all. Especially after all the cleaning and packing I did yesterday in preparation for the flight. I yawned real big, remembering at the last second to cover my open mouth with a paw. Tired? Maybe a little. You can go to bed if you want. It's been a long day. I'd feel bad ditching you, though. It's true, I would. I've really been enjoying just sitting with him. It's fine, I'm probably not long for this world either. Cold weather makes me sleepy. Okay, I think I'll probably head to bed then. I say gratefully, maneuvering myself off the bed and standing up straight. Good night. Ollie chirps, waving a claw at me, the many windows of his laptop casting dancing lights across his face. Good night, Ollie. <laughs> With some regret, I turn away and head out of the room. I remember Theo saying I'd be sleeping in the den. Through my sleepy haze, the small sitting room looks even cozier than it did before. I notice a pile of extra blankets in one of the chairs alongside my travel bag. Guess Theo moved it for me. So far, he's been an excellent host. Gotta to remember to thank him tomorrow. And maybe apologize again for asking about the photograph. Theo's face lingers in my mind as I start getting ready for bed. His tired eyes, his easygoing smile, seems a little less convincing. Now I've caught a glimpse of what's behind it. <laughs> oh god, that's what I was thinking. Peter, the horse is here. I shut the doors, closing myself off from the rest of the house, and breathe a small sigh of relief. Everyone has been friendly and welcoming, but being so social has been exhausting, and I've had very little time to myself. I yawn once more and fish some pajamas out of my bag. At least I could sleep in tomorrow. The air mattress is an air mattress, but it's not uncomfortable. It's certainly better than my freezing bed back home. Regardless, my body doesn't seem to care. Sleep overwhelms me in an instant. Oh, thank you. I barely have time to realize I forgot to brush my teeth. Though these woods are new and strange, the snowy path, I know, where I've walked it miles and miles with many more to go, with many more to go. Oh god, the temptation to give a character a Peter, a Lois Griffin voice. Near the road forks, the left path is well trod, scarred by scores of travelers past. Their paw prints seem familiar. In its end lies a ramshackle house, spent, its windows shattered and gaping. Its walls give no comfort, its hearth no heat. The right path is pure, unspoiled, and unstained. It's time to drink water. It leads further into darkness. It's time to drink water.
It's time to drink water. <laughs> it's time to drink water. Yeah. Leads further into darkness, to where I cannot know. I shiver, though I feel no chill. What path shall I take, and what difference will it make? Callous and unheeding, my paws lead me to the right. They carry me, as always, ever onward through the night. I turn my head to glimpse once more at the path I could not take. But my eyes are veiled by shadow and the swirl of downy flake. There was never a choice. There is no going back. I know this. I step on the shore of the frozen lake. The path leads onward to its depths. I feel my knees bend and strike the hard earth, lightly cushioned by snow. In the icy crystal surface I see myself, but myself does not see me. I reach out as if to cut my own face, shattering the mirror with a thousand ethereal ripples. And suddenly, I am falling. The water accepts me unconditionally, cold as the memory of winter. As I float near the surface, a shadow passes over me. I see my own face on the other side of the barrier. I look away, afraid to meet my own eyes. I feel a paw reach out and I instinctively shrink away. Sink away. Down. Down. Suddenly I find myself swaddled in warmth. I blink my eyes open, startled by my unfamiliar surroundings. Ever so slowly, reality starts to coalesce around me. Just another dream. That's all it was. They've been getting worse. I begin to recollect the previous day. Recollect. Theo, Rofi, Artemis, Ollie, and Hunter. I roll onto my back and place my paws behind my head, stretching slightly. For a few long moments, I sit in silence, listening to my heart beat steadily in my chest. I'm alive and safe. I think. What time is it? I paw around the den floor looking for my phone. Eight. On a normal day, I'd sleep in a bit longer, but... The smell of breakfast wafting in from the kitchen makes my stomach growl. Probably Artemis, our resident chef. Then again, I don't think anyone else is going to be up this early. The image of a comfortable, curled-up Rofi crosses my mind. Maybe I'll get to s Maybe I'll see if I can get him up later. If I get up later. Do we get up or go back to sleep? Breakfast or sleep? Breakfast is too fucking delicious. This is hardly a normal day off. I'm awake, so I might as well go have some breakfast. Besides, I'm not eager to return to my dreams. I get a few good stretches in before, reluctantly, leaving my surprisingly comfortable air mattress. First things first, a shower. I unzip my luggage, grabbing a change of clothes and a few toiletries. I pause at the door and take a few slow breaths, bracing myself for the day ahead. Here we go. Social Leo, activate. <clears throat> I head into the living room first and see Theo settled comfortably in front of the fire drinking coffee. Oh, Leo, good morning. How did you sleep? Morning, Theo. Slept pretty well, actually. Thank you again for setting up the mattress for me. Glad to hear it. You're up earlier than I expected. Right on cue, I stifle a yawn with my paw. You can go back to bed if you want. I think most of the house is still asleep. No, I'm fine. I just need to shake off the morning sleepiness. Speaking of, who is awake right now? Well, I knew Artemis threw together a breakfast spread in the kitchen. I think Hunter is with him, but everyone else is still in dreamland. If you're in the mood, you should if you're in the mood, you should join them for a bite. No, I'm not normally a breakfast guy, but Artemis made fresh scones that I couldn't refuse. That does sound nice. But I do want to freshen up first, if that's alright. Oh, of course. The bathroom is just around the corner. Put some fresh towels in there earlier this morning, so take your pick. He really was prepared for everything. Gotcha. Thanks again, Theo. We wave goodbye and I make my way to the bathroom. After a refreshing shower, I return to the den, setting my dirty clothes aside and grabbing my phone. Making my way to the kitchen, I start to hear talking and laughing. Definitely Hunter's voice. Okay, but why take all the joy out of food? It's not that bad! I still eat what I want for like, half the year! Seems like I walked in on some kind of discussion. Hey, uh, good morning, you two. They both turn to face me. Morning, Leo. Morning! 
Help yourself to some breakfast. We have fresh scones, pancakes, and a bunch of fruit. Awesome, I'll go ahead and make a plate, and sorry if I interrupted your conversation. No worries, I'm just trying to explain macros to all Artie here. He must have picked that nickname up from Rofi, but Artemis doesn't seem annoyed by it. Macros? Why are the dogs screaming? Why, why are they screaming? Macros? Macronutrients, you know, like the stuff you put in your body? He basically starves himself for half the year to look good. Okay, I'm gonna go see... Okay, I'm going to go see what they're screaming about. I'll be right back. And I'm back. Okay, what the actual fuck did I miss? You know you're allowed to say that shit in my server, right? Like, you know you're allowed to. I'm... I'm not going to stop you. The only person I feel like you even remote... I feel like, because I'm not going to stop you, the only person in power that you might even have to remotely worry about is Lug, and he's chill. So, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, Hunter, but if you're starving yourself for half the year, uh, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I'm, I'm going to throw hands. Square up, motherfucker. He basically starves himself for half the year to look good. I do not... The point is, you keep track of what you eat so you stay well nourished while minimizing sugar and fat intake. And it's not just for my own benefit, I gotta keep it up to stay on the gymnastics team. It sounds awful to me. One of the greatest joys of cooking is trial and error. Imagine weighing every spoon of sugar and salt you put in a dish. Oh, don't worry about it, my guy. Don't worry about it. Go for it. Be as unhinged as you want. Imagine weighing every spoon of sugar and salt you put in a dish. So, Hunter, do you cook? Well, when I'm not feeling the dining off food. He looks at Artemis a bit sheepishly. You're not wrong, though. I usually keep my meals simple so they're easy to log. Let me guess. Chicken and rice, eight days a week. As I listen to their banter, I start to put together a plate of food for myself. A hearty stack of pancakes with fruit topped off with homemade scone. I could get used to this. Well, it's easy to prepare, and chicken breast has a really good protein-to-fat ratio. Um. You can't be honest with the character you want in your bed. Oh, no. Oh, you're lagging too much? I think it might be Twitch servers. I don't know. Because I'm outputting the correct amount of kilo... Because I'm outputting the correct kilobits per second ratio thing. Yeah, and it's also the hardest part of the chicken to make tasty. No fat means little to no flavor. Well, chef, do you have any suggestions to jazz up chicken breast? Well, if you're looking to give it some extra flavor and moisture, how about a glaze? I grab a seat and dig in. The pancakes are fluffy and perfectly sweet. I found a great red pepper paste at the store the other day that's sweet and spicy. I don't think it has a ton of sugar, and I've made some great glazes with it. Hunter pulls out his phone and starts typing. He shows us his search results. This one? 
both waiting for. The image of the container has some language I can't read, but Artemis nods. Yes, but that looks pretty expensive online. I can show you where you get it next time I go shop. Artemis is cut off by a ding. The sound of Hunter's phone authorizing a purchase. Uh, oops, I figured I'd just order it now. Uh, alright. Not to tell you what to do, but your website's usually jack up the price if you only order one or two things. In the future, you should probably... Another dink from Hunter's phone. No, it's not that bad. I ordered a fresh package of chicken, too. He is a dumbass. He is a buff dumbass. <laughs> he is a buff dumbass. And I love him for it. Is that a fucking ponytail? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Is that a fucking ponytail? Oh god damn, I'm twinning with him, kind of. Another single item order? Hunter shrugs it off. I just wanted to put the orders in before I forgot. I don't expect them to have any sense soon. He gestures to the windows. I can see the gears turning into Artemis' head as he tries to understand Hunter's nonchalance. His expression remains relatively neutral, though. Eventually, he shakes his head and turns to me. Either way, I'm glad to see some of you enjoying my food. He gives me a snarky nod as I nibble on my scone. Light, buttery, and soft to give him a thumbs up and continue eating. Hey, I had fruit. You had, like, five strawberries and a protein shake. That didn't make over yesterday, I had too much bread pudding. At that moment, Theo strides into the kitchen, all geared up to head outside. Oh, great, all the early birds are here. He makes eye contact with Artemis, then cringes slightly. Uh, no offense. None taken. I'm heading out to shovel the front of the... There's snow at the front. Uh, then I think I'll check on some... Check on a few more folk down the street. Hunter's eyes light up immediately. What else shoveling? I need something to work off breakfast. Artemis is very pointedly silent. His face says it all. You're in luck. You're in luck. I have a second I have a second shovel you can use. Sweet, let me get changed real quick. Hunter hops up from his seat, carefully placing his plate in the sink. Thanks again for breakfast, Artie. Yeah, thanks, Artemis. The J nods, directing his attention to his phone as Hunter jogs out of the kitchen. As always, please make yourselves at home while we're out. We shouldn't be gone for too long. Theo turns to leave the kitchen. Soon after, I hear Hunter come down the stairs to join him. The door opens, shuts, and then the house is quiet again. I finish the last few bites of my food as Artemis gets up from his seat. If he wants to work off breakfast, he has to actually EAT at first. He has no calories to work off right now. There it is. Anyway, you can hand me your plate if you're finished. I'll clean up in a bit. Do you need any help? Nah. I promised Rofi a cooking lesson today, so I'll do all the cleaning after that. That sounds fun. What are you teaching him? Not sure. Whatever I could whip up from the stuff in the fridge. A set of paw steps echo in the stairwell. Speak of the devil. Artie, good morning! Rofi calls out as he enters the kitchen. His eyes light up when he sees me at the table. Oh, morning, Leo. Morning, Rofi. Rofi grins at me, then makes his way over to the fridge. What are we cooking today? Artemis joins him in front of the fridge, inspecting the available ingredients. I take that as my cue to excuse myself, not wanting to get in their way. I return to the living room and sit on the couch. Seems like Ollie is a late sleeper. Wonder if he's up yet. I get Ollie's number from her group chat and send him a text. Hey, you up? After a few minutes, I get a response. Barely. Why? Want to hang out for a bit? If you aren't too sleepy. His response comes instantly. Oh yeah, come upstairs. Ollie answers the door on the second knock, still rubbing sleep from his eyes. Morning. Morning, Ollie. Hope it didn't wake you. Nah. Nah. He lets out a huge toothy yawn. You're good. Come on in. Why am I making you sound constipated? <laughs> the room looks pretty much the same as yesterday, with the notable exception of the finished desktop setup, pulsing with an assortment of colors. Looks like you got everything set up. Looking good. Yeah. He yawns again, nodding. Let me boot it up for you. Ollie's desktop background, at least the parts of it visible underneath the clutter of files and folders, 
Looks like some sort of painting. A lone knight kneeling at the foot of a grave, bearing a gilded shield inlaid, inlaid with several glittering gemstones. My vision is quickly obstructed as the diner begins pulling up windows, filling each monitor with the matter of the moments. Uh, wait, sorry. But could I get a better look at your desktop background? Oh, of course. Ollie's gentle blue eyes light up in excitement. He fiddles with the center monitor and pulls it up unobstructed. Oh, shit. That is so cute. Does girl also play Kingdom... Does girl play Kingdom Hearts? I hope so. Do you recognize it? Oh, shit. Elden Ring? I haven't... I haven't played that game in a while. Like, a couple months. I got stuck. Yeah, I don't know why. That's a Dark Souls reference. Id Software knew what they were doing when they made Blythe. They knew what they were doing. Do you recognize it? Sorry, no. It just looked interesting. Oh, that's okay. His excitement barely wavers. Seems as if he's just as happy to explain it. It's from an RPG called Tales of Wheel and Will. It's one of my all-time favorite. It's one of my all-time favorites. This is a really pivotal scene that happens towards the end once you've gathered all seven crystals. I won't spoil what happens, but it's a pretty famous twist. The game is known for its fantastic storytelling, which is why, I've, which is why it's one of my favorites. I'm a sucker for story-heavy RPGs. Anything I can really lose myself in. Huh. I've never actually heard of it. What's the plot about? Vaguely, I mean. I'm not sure how much I can describe it without spoiling anything. Its presentation is really masterful, so just hearing about it won't do it won't do it justice. The basic setup is simple, though. You play here, sent on a quest to collect seven magic crystals in order to restore sunlight to a cursed kingdom. It's what they do with such well. It's what they do with such a well-trod premise that makes it a masterpiece, though. It made me laugh and made me cry and made me seriously think about life while also helping me take life less seriously. And it has one of the most complicated and rewarding skill trees I've ever seen. To be honest, I played just for that. Wow. With such high praise, I'm surprised I haven't heard of it before. Ollie shrugs. It's fairly text-heavy and requires a lot of investment to really get into. Not everyone's cup of tea. The story, though, is just so perfect. God, I really want to talk about it, but... Spoilers. Spoilers. What else can we talk about? How many games have you been into recently? Well, I'm actually into story-heavy games myself. Yeah? What kind of stories do you like best, Leo? Light, happy stories, serious, sad stories, or sad stories with happy endings. How about happy stories? How about scary stories with sad endings? Cough, cough. Echo. Cough, cough. Ad Astra. Cough, cough. Literally every fucking furry visual novel we have ever- that exists. Sad stories with happy endings. I hope that's undefeated. This might be a weird answer, but I like sad stories with happy endings. Stories that make me feel a range of emotions. That challenge me to see both the light and dark side of things. Trauma and FVNs is name a more iconic duo, right? That's not a weird answer at all. That's how I feel, too. The dino's tail swishes lightly behind him, reminiscent of a wag. Stories that don't shrink away from pain and sadness, but don't wallow in it, either. Ollie starts to stutter a little, cheeks turning slightly red. I mean, I feel sad pretty often, so I guess it's nice to be reminded that other people feel the same way. Ollie looks directly into my eyes, his face deeply serious. Hiya. But it's also nice to be reminded there are alternatives to sorrow. That sadness isn't a foregone conclusion. That hoop really does spring eternal. I guess it's kind of a cliche, but you know. Sometimes things are cliches for a reason. Sometimes it's because they're beautiful and true. You know, I really think you would like Tales of Wheel and Well. The name is very descriptive. Plenty of sunshine, plenty of shadow. And once you've played it, we can talk about it for real. Okay, then. It's a promise. Ollie beams at me, trying and failing to rein in his excitement. Great. Oh, I'm so excited for you to start. There are several easy places where you can buy it, so... <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. With an abrupt sound, the lights in the room go out, followed immediately by Ollie's computer screens. <laughs> in an instant where you are bathed in darkness, eyes locking in grim understanding. The power. Shit. 
I know I should have brought that surge protector. We hear voices from downstairs. Clearly, everyone else has noticed mm -hmm. it, too. Both our phones buzz. It's Artemis. The power is out. Everyone, please gather in the living room. You too, Ollie. The dino huffs and annoys. There was no need to single me out. I would have come down. Come on, Leo, let's go. When we reach the base of the stairs, we find Artemis in the living room, stiffly pacing back and forth. There you are, Ollie. There you are, Ollie. Come sit down here. The gas fire may have turned off, but it's still warm here. Artemis, it's fine. The power just went out. It's still warm everywhere. You know how quickly heat can leach out of a building. Please just sit. He gestures to the couch, the anxiety now playing in his voice. For a moment, the two of them just look at each other. And then Ollie stiffly walks to the couch and sits, averting his eyes. Thank you. The bird turns to me. Have you seen Theo? Uh, no, not since this morning. He did say he was going to check on some houses after shoveling. The bird scowled deep into his forehead, furrowing into a mess of feathery wrinkles. Great. Just great. Oh, hiya. The front door creaks open and Rufy's head pops through. Hey, Artie, I grabbed Hunter, just like you asked. What's going on? It's just getting into the shoveling groove. The two of them file into the house, stomping the snow off their boots. The power's gone out. Artemis says brusquely, absorbed in his phone. Here, come sit. It'll be easier to discuss when we're all in one place. Well, what about Theo? He went to check on a few neighbors, but he's still... Yes. I know. The bird cuts him off with a raised talon and slips his phone back into his pocket. I just sent him a text. Hopefully... Mm -hmm. All four of our heads turn to a nearby side table. Wordlessly, Artemis walks over to the table and picks up the phone sitting on its surface. Un. Fucking believable! Is it? Yup. It's Theo's. Sure, yeah, just wander off into a snowstorm without your phone real smart. Yeah, I'll go get him then. Artemis shakes his head in annoyance, eyes darting around the room. No, you stay here, there's no point in splitting up. Hunter hesitates for a second, then continues lacing up his boots. But it can't be that far, it'll take me a few minutes, stops. And what if he's in someone's house helping them with something? Artemis snaps at Hunter. You can't walk, you could walk right past him and not know. The raccoon recoils slightly at Artemis' tone, then frowns and fires back. So what? I'm just supposed to wait here? Who knows when he'll return? So, yes, so we all wait here until then. What's not clicking? Better than all of us just wandering out into the snow with no idea where we're going. Well, Artie, it, it would only be one of us. Why is it so hard for you to two to just sit still? Okay. Artemis's voice is hard and flinty now, something near panic reflecting in his wide eyes. At that moment, Ollie stands up from the couch and strides purposefully across the living room. Ollie, where are you going? The dino stops at one of the lamps and flicks the light switch a few times. Nothing. Ollie, the power is out. What are you doing? Ollie doesn't answer, just moves on to the next closest lamp. The corner of the room floods with light as the lamp turns on. Oh. Rofi is the first to break the silence, eyes wide and understanding. So, it was just the circuit breaker. Artemis? Ollie's voice is gentle and calm, quivering only slightly. The breaker box is down in the basement, right? Can you show me where? The bird stands speechless for a long moment, then nods. He drops his gaze and starts to shuffle towards the basement door. We'll be right back. Ollie says to the room at large, then seems to reconsider. Though, it might be best if everyone sees where it is in case this happens again. Sure, we'll come with. I motion to the other two and start following Ollie. 
The basement is spacious, though dimly lit by a few small snow-covered windows. Aided by his phone flashlight, Ollie locates the breaker box and quickly finds the trip to switch. There we go. That should do it. Hunter sighs in relief and claps him on the back. Well, good thinking, Ollie. I don't know why, but I never thought it would be the circuit breaker. Yeah, me neither. I guess it's because there have been so many power outages already. The dino blushes and scratches the back of his head. I mean, the wiring in my building sucks, and I tend to use a lot of plugs at once. So, I'm used to having to reset the circuit. Circuits a lot. Uh, speaking of, I'll keep my desktop unplugged for now. I think that was probably what did it. Hi, huh, you sir. I bet we can find some other stuff to unplug so you can still use it. Um, no, that doesn't seem very fair. I still have my laptop, and it's my fault that everyone got so worked up anyway. No. Artemis speaks up for the first time, sheepish and halting. It was my fault. I got a little carried away. He looks at each of us in turn. Sorry, I was just worried about. His eyes flick to Ollie for an instant. About everyone. I was trying to keep everyone safe and calm, and I didn't do a good job of that. Hey, no worries, bud. Hunter reassures him softly. No hard feelings, okay? We were all a little stressed out. Yeah, we're all friends here. Don't worry about it, Artie. The bird scratches his head and smiles slightly. Thinking about it, I guess Rofi was right. It was starting to feel like we were all friends, even though some of us had only met yesterday. The back upstairs, huh? I think you might have left the stove on. Oh, right. Artemis turns and hustles back up the stairs, and we all follow, sharing smiles with each other. I hang back with Ollie as we re-enter the living room, and folks start to go their separate ways. Really good call, Ollie. You saved us all a big headache. It was nothing, really. I just... He glances over at the kitchen, where Artemis and Rofi are still figuring out lunch. Here, follow me up to my room again. I want, I want to make sure everything's disconnected properly. Sure. He goes to work unplugging the various computer wires. Ollie talks to me quietly from underneath the desk. This may seem a little strange to say, but... Please don't think badly of Artemis because of this. He can just be a little overprotective at times. Especially when it comes to me. Yeah, I could tell, to be honest. But I promise it doesn't come from a place of malice. He can be a little controlling, but only when he's worried about someone. Finishing his work, Ollie looks up at me with serious eyes. I know he cares about all of us here, not just me. He's really warmed up to the rest of you as well, far quicker than he normally does. And, well, it's nice to see, between the two of us, he may seem like the more outgoing one, but honestly, he has as much trouble making friends as I do. Something in Ollie's eyes catches my attention. A deep, tender warmth. I noticed it before, too, when he told me the story about how they met. It makes me want to ask, hey, sorry if this is a little forward, but... Ollie blinks at me questioningly. Are you and Artemis a thing? A thing? Oh! Ollie turns redder than anyone I've ever seen. Far redder than Rofi. Impressive for such a green dino. Oh, you mean like, like... Um, no. We are not a, a thing. <laughs> Ollie mumbles, frantically twiddling his claws, eyes shooting around the room. Hey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have pried. I just, based on the you two talk about each other... I guess I just wouldn't be surprised if everyone else was thinking the same thing. Really? <laughs> uh, oh. Um. Well, I. Um. No. I mean, it's not like I would. I mean. Um. Look, it's okay. I'll drop it. Like I said, I shouldn't have brought it up. I. Um. Sorry. No, we. No, we are not a, a thing. We're very good friends. In the same way that you and Rofi are. He smiles at me, seemingly, ad seemingly glad to have found his voice. My stomach turns slightly, though I'm not entirely sure why. At least, I don't really want to think about why. Right, of course, makes sense. A bit of awkwardness still hangs in the air as, as Ollie fiddles a bit more with the setup. Right as I start to check my phone, he speaks up. If you don't mind, I think I'd like to take a shower and freshen up. Oh, sure, sure. Today's been a little more exciting than I'd bargained for. Ollie chuckles slightly, running his claws through his crest. Agreed, I, and I didn't sleep that well either. You too, huh? Well, if you ever find yourself awake in the middle of the night, shoot me a text. There's a decent chance I'll be awake then, too. Deal. Enjoy your shower. Theo left towels and everything else we might need in the bathroom, so you should be all set. Thanks. I'll see you around, Leo. See you around, Ollie. I shut the door behind me and immediately start kicking myself for prying. Come on, Leo, don't you remember what curiosity does to cats? Ollie was so embarrassed. 
As I start to make my way downstairs, I remember his request. Please don't think badly of Artemis. Maybe I should go check on him. Out of all of us, he seems the most stressed by the day's events. Then my stomach growls in protest, reminding me that it's past lunchtime already. I could definitely use a bite. I bet if I find Rofi in the kitchen... I bet I'll find Rofi in the kitchen. And where there's food there, I'll probably find Hunter too. What should I do first? Check on Artemis or get a bite to eat? <sighs> yippee yo and yippee yay. E.T. is an alien and he is kind of spacey. My fucking microphone broke, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna cry. Eat Artemis? No! That's cannibalism! And possibly Vor. It's cannibalism and Vor. No. Maybe I'll grab a bite to eat first. Artemis might not want company right now anyway. I head back downstairs to check the kitchen. As I enter the warm space, I spot Rofi browsing on his phone while nibbling something. He looks up as I come in. Leo, you're just in time! Look what we made! He gestures to a massive heap of fried dumplings piled high onto a plate. Ah, oh, fuck. My goddamn microphone. There we go. That's crazy. I swear I was only upstairs for a few minutes. Well, I'm pretty familiar with preparing the filling, and already just threw together a quick dough for the dumpling wrappers. It ended up taking off like 30 minutes altogether. And now I know how to make dumpling wrappers from scratch thanks to Artie! And knowing how quick of a learner he was, I'm sure he'd be able to replicate Artemis' recipe on his first try. Speaking of, where is he? Oh, I'm not sure. He said he wanted to rest up there for a bit. I think the electricity I threw him for a bit of a loop, and he probably wants a little alone time. Oh, I see. Did he seem alright, though? Rofi thinks for a moment, then slowly nods. Yeah, I think so. Maybe a little stressed, but otherwise okay. I tried to make it really clear that we weren't mad at him, and I think he believed me. That's good to hear. Anyway, what a dumpling! He sticks his tongue out and waves one in my face. Sure, I could use a little snack right about now. Right on cue, Hunter strolls into the kitchen. Did I hear snacks? We're gonna stop it for the ad. Wanna break from the ads? Ah! I'm sorry. Here it is. <laughs> Did I eat snacks? Rofi waves at him excitedly and points to the plate of dumplings. <gasps> Look what I made! With Artie's help! Oh, that's awesome. What's in them? Rofi starts rambling off ingredients. Chives, diced mushrooms, cabbage. But I notice Hunter's eyes light up at the mention of pork. Sounds great. Want to bring it up to my room and share? Wait, what about Ollie and Theo? Artie said... said that aside place for them already. Then it sounds like we have the rest to ourselves. Group hang out right there. Before he can zoom off, Hunter holds his pot in front of Rofi. Wait, wait, hold on a sec. Don't you want to do the honors of bringing the plate? You are the chef behind this food, after all. It was clear that Hunter just didn't want to bring the plate up himself. Rofi groans in response. Okay, fine. You grab the utensil. You grab the utensil. Then, this time it's Hunter's turn to groan, but he doesn't object. <laughs> Plate in hand, Rofi carefully hops up the stairs, leaving just Hunter and me in the kitchen. Wanna grab us some napkins? We can't get a, let him get too far ahead of us or all the food will be gone. On it. In record time, the two of us were able to find appropriate cutlery for the dumplings, and we head upstairs to meet Rofi. We're gonna leave off here tonight. This game is too pure. Oh shit, I didn't mean it. Uh, gifted sub, Damien. Ah! Ah! Well, I am semi tired. 
So, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.